Hey everyone, so I am here to do a review, and I am here to do a review of, I think it's season 8, but anyways, this is American Horror Story Apocalypse, okay? So, I have thoughts, I have thoughts, I have opinions, whatever, whatever you want to call it, I, I have it, okay? So, let's first start it out with the season was supposed to be about, or at least what I thought it was supposed to be about, okay. So, as you can see, apocalypse, right? Apocalypse, end of the world, okay? And that's what it seemed like it was supposed to be about, and technically it was about. Anyways, so we start out with this group of people, right? There's this girl, she's famous for some reason, I can't remember what, like an internet personality, or she's trying to be. Her father's rich, so she's like, she has money through him, right? So she's a rich girl, and there's her assistant, and then they're at the hair salon, right? So there's the girl, her assistant, uh, the hairdresser, who of course is gay, um, and his rich grandmother. Well, we see the grandmother um, later on after, like, the big thing happens or after it's announced, basically. So I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. Anyways, so they're in the hair salon. They're talking, and everyone gets this alert on their phone that a missile is coming. I think they're, they were, like, in Los Angeles, I think, and they were going to go to Santa Monica, um, but California, right? There's a missile coming to California, and her father gets on the phone, like, on video chat, because everyone's thinking that it's a hoax, because they talk about something that happened in Hawaii and stuff, and her father gets on the phone and tells her that it's real. I think he was in Hong Kong, and there was a missile coming for them. These, these missiles are coming, like, all over the world and everything. They're, like, nuclear bombs and stuff, right? So, he tells her it's real, and there's, like, a place, like, a fallout shelter, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think in the show they called them, like, outposts and everything, but there's a place reserved for them. But, because of where he's at and the family's with them, they won't make it there. So, they're gonna die, right? Or something. You know, they're not gonna make it to her. So, he tells her to go to that outpost it's like places obviously for rich people of course you know because who else is going to afford to be safe in those kind of situations except for rich people anyways so she takes her assistant because she can't do anything without her and the hairdresser asks to go with and he gets his grandmother to go the girl is waiting on her boyfriend and you know, he's taken forever, and they gotta go, because people are coming for her, like, her private plane, um, because the, the end of the world is coming, people want to try and save themselves, so, you know, they get on the plane, and they go to this outpost. Now, on another section, there is this one kid, these people from the government, or whatever, you can assume they are, come and take him, because he's special, and, you know, they're trying to save the special people, um, from dying in this so he's put into like this room that's kind of like uh, I don't know if you want to call it a cage but he's kind of locked up and then there's this girl on top of him she has no idea why she's there so they end up going to the outpost and they learn that um, you know it's for like the elite like either like the rich or the super smart or whatever because like i don't think this kid was like as rich as the girl with the hairdresser um but it looked like he looked he lit it looked like he lived in a nice house but anyways so at some point they all kind of meet up in this outpost you know the girl, her assistant, the hairdresser, the hairdresser's, uh, I think it's his grandmother. Yeah, not, not his mom, it's his grandmother. That's who she is. And the two people, the guy and the girl, who were locked up together. And 
there's like a couple more people there too. But anyways, they learn that there's like rankings at this place, like the high people, the people like in the higher ranks are like considered purples, and then like the people like her assistant are considered greys, right? So the greys weigh on, or wait on the, um, the purples, right? Their servants and everything. And there's like all these weird rules, like you can't be together and stuff, which, I mean, in some ways I can see because if like the apocalypse had just happened, you know, you're trying to like preserve food and stuff, but eventually, um, you're gonna try to, I don't know, repopulate the human race and everything, right? As best you can. And But people are, like, being literally executed for just being a couple there. Because this woman, she basically is running it with her own rules. So they get, like, these little cubes to eat that are supposed to be, like, full of, like, vitamins and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously something is wrong. Like, this woman is, like, on a power trip and everything. And her assistant, um, they end up killing a guy because he got some stuff, some radiation on him. And it, it's just kind of crazy, right? But it seems, you know, like it's going into a good direction, right? It's dark and gritty. It's a survival story. You got these people with power trips and, you know, people who have beliefs about this and that and you know people who want to stay people who want to go and risk you know going out there so you have like a diverse cast right um between like race and sexuality and personality and beliefs so it started out good right it started out like it's going into a good direction we were going to get more of a survival horror right or a take down the power kind of horror thriller kind of thing, right? Started out good. Then this guy comes and we begin to learn that the whole apocalypse thing is happening um, because somebody is the son of the devil. And that's where it went downhill from there. It's like they couldn't figure out how to make the end of the world scenario clever compared to other apocalyptic stories or zombie stories and stuff because that comes up a lot, right? When you're talking about like apocalypse stories, like a lot of them zombie tales and stuff. It's easy, usually it seems it's either like zombies or like aliens if you're gonna go like a sci-fi like a really deep sci-fi or um supernatural kind of thing or something like that right it i don't even know if you call it zombie supernatural right i think that's i don't know or sci-fi whatever that's usually what it is other than just war right because if you have something like sci-fi or horror that's like deep in those genres, like I said, a lot of times it's zombies or um, aliens, right? And then you have some like afterworld dystopian kind of things, like um, what was that one movie? Oh, The Road, right? Um, and, well no, that was like zombies or vampires for I Am Legend. But you, but you get what I mean, or Zombieland, th those kind of things, right? You get those. And if you go, like, the dystopian route, you get, like, the Hunger Games and um, some other stuff, okay? So, yeah, a lot of stuff has been done, and I get you need to kind of make your own thing. You need to put your own twist on it, but it's just like, you know... It's just like they couldn't find a way to put their own twist on it. So they brought in mixtures from other seasons. And this has happened before. Like there's been little mixes here and there. But I just thought it was forced, right? Because they brought in the characters from Coven. And I know there was some scenes from Hotel. I was watching Hotel on Hulu. But unfortunately, um, I had to pay for Hulu again. So I didn't get to watch Hotel. 
I think you can um, not watch either one of them because they kind of recap some stuff. But I think it would more help if you watched Coven because a lot of that plays into this one. And, you know, if they just had a different, like, setting, scenario, whatever, to bring back the Coven characters because I like that season. You know, they were all interesting characters and everything. But not for Apocalypse. Not for something called Apocalypse. I wanted, like, a dark, gritty, survival kind of story. And, like I said, I got... It's the fault of the Son of Satan kind of thing, right? And then there's, like, the Coven, which is coming to stop him. And, like... I don't know if you want to call it prophecies and shit like that. And, um... Going back in time and stuff like that, which would have been fine. That in itself, like the acting was good. Um, it was fun. I won't lie. It's, a lot of it was fun to watch. But it felt like once that Langdon guy came in and we learned, you know, he was supernatural or whatever, or he had powers, it became like a whole different thing. Like it wasn't... American Horror Story Apocalypse anymore. Right? And, yeah, in some ways it was clever how they kind of tied things all up, but I've seen better twists, I think, on South Park, right? I think it's like, what, season 14 or whatever, and I'm sorry if I'm uh, spoiling the stuff, but this has been out for over 10 years now. Um... You know, like, when we find out that the reason Kenny doesn't die is because his parents, like, were part of a cult and they did this ritualistic stuff or whatever. You know, it just kind of felt like that. Like, they didn't know how to write an apocalypse story. Or they didn't know how to write one that was their own thing. So they just kind of pulled um, from earlier seasons to kind of try to explain this. And it's just not in my opinion, done well. Like I said, if the whole witches versus the devil thing was, like, in a different setting, like I said, if they just made a second coven season or something like that, that would have been one thing. But it just doesn't mesh with this, right? It's just, it seemed, like I said, just a reason pulled out of thin air, right? Also, the other thing is, I'm not well-versed, as in, like, an expert, and I don't practice these religions. But from what I know, and some of this kind of goes back to some issues that people, and even I, have with Coven. Um, first of all, I don't know a whole lot about Voodoo or Budan. I think that's how you say it, um... Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure that Papa Legba isn't, like, a ruler of hell, per se. Um, because I don't know, first of all, if they would have originally had that concept, um, in, like, African voodoo and stuff, because it's a different religion, um, than Christianity. I don't think it's considered an Abrahamic faith. Um, and I know other religions have had their versions of, like, the underworld or the land of the dead and stuff, but everyone seems to kind of compare it to hell, which they're not. Um, hell as in the Christian hell, not like the Nordic hell or anything. Right? So, I don't think he's supposed to be like this evil hell-raising figure or whatever they try to portray that in this, this season. And I think probably the other one too. The other thing, too, is they bring up, like, the Church of Satan and everything. And um, I'm pretty sure at least, like, Levian Satanism is actually atheistic. So they wouldn't really be praising Satan as, like, a god they look up to, right? Well, they acknowledge God, but they worship the devil. And it's not an actual, like, devil worshiping. So it's like they pulled stuff out of thin air. They just kind of rehashed some stuff from earlier seasons and they didn't do proper research on the religions they were using. Um, I'd say 
watch it for yourself and everything. Like I said, some stuff is entertaining in here. There are some characters that I really liked and everything. They were just out there and just fun to watch. But this isn't the best season by any means. Anyways, let me know what you thought if you watch this stuff.